And the net effect is going to be voter suppression. It can't be anything else. Today, we've witnessed a uh, step towards the most morally uh, backwards voter suppression laws in the United States so far. We're not here to get arrested, but to instruct Tom Tillis, an elected official, as is our constitutional right, to kill House Bill 589. We want him to meet with us, the moral majority of North Carolina, to explain to us why North Carolina is moving backwards and not forward. This bill proposes the most regressive voter suppression law since Reconstruction. We demand that Tom Tillis show leadership and reflect the true desire of the citizens of North Carolina and kill Bill 589. Thanks for coming by. We do not desire to be arrested. We desire to exercise our right as citizens of North Carolina to meet with the elected officials whose duty it is to represent the will of the people and safeguard democracy. We demand to meet with Representative Tom Tillis to ask him this question. Why do you support a bill making it more difficult for North Carolina citizens to vote? This question is not rhetorical. As a politician seeking a seat in the U.S. Senate, we expect him to respond to the concerns of the people he seeks to represent. We expect him to take a stand on the right side of history and uphold democracy in North Carolina. If Representative Tillis cannot answer our question, if he cannot explain to us why it is a good idea to reduce the civic participation of North Carolina voters and to legalize voter intimidation at the polls, then we expect Representative Tillis to kill Bill 589. We deserve an answer and an explanation. The House and Senate Republicans don't even seem to be in agreement. Today, Senator High said that voter fraud was rampant and House Bill 589 was needed to combat it. But Representative Tillis has said that voter fraud is not an issue and is, quote, not the primary reason for this bill. Again, we do not desire to be arrested. We desire to meet with Representative Tom Tillis, and we will not leave until he meets with us and agrees to kill this bill. Thank you. Now we'll sit. Well, folks, I would just say again, thanks for coming by. I don't, I didn't follow up what went on in the Senate. I, I was told the third reading was not taken on the bill in the Senate. I don't know if, if, if that's the case, but I was told that if it is the case and third reading hasn't happened yet, then the Senate still has possession of the bill. Uh, so, so we don't even have possession of the bill yet. What we'd be asking today is for him to come and meet and then also commit to, to, uh, to kill that, those provisions that are in the bill already. Okay, and when, when, when it comes over from the Senate, we'll review those provisions carefully. And as far as your, your meeting request, uh, we, have a, we have a process. We can, uh, Mr. Morales here will look at the calendar uh, and we will uh, we'll see if we can make something happen. Okay. I need to get back to the chamber. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now hearing that the Yogi Berra stand up in order. This is an argument. We have no time to follow up. We are very familiar with the previous bill. Our argument is not. You can stand up. There's a lot of rhetoric about, you know, the other southeastern states have already done this, and there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, comparison and, and reference to Georgia and Florida. The only thing in Florida that out of the out of the governor's office in Florida that's of any kind of uh, heralding is what the Dream Defenders are doing, and we stand in solidarity with them. Yeah. We stand in solidarity with every group of people in the United States that are standing up for their right, their 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 unequivocal, constitutionally guaranteed right to free and fair elections and fair voting practices. We fought too hard, and I say we as in the, the collective, the moral majority, black, brown, Latinos, whites, gay, straight, economically challenged, economically well off, and we are sitting today until we talk to Speaker Tillis and he guarantees us that he, kill, he will kill uh, House Bill 589. I attended a Senate committee meeting um, on this bill yesterday, 
Not a single citizen who was present stood up to speak in favor of this bill. Every person who stood up was speaking in opposition to this bill. Early voting has, is favored by North Carolinians, and yet the legislator insists on doing away with our early voting rights. They cannot offer a sufficient explanation for why it's necessary to ban vote, student IDs for voting. They cannot explain um, why we can't continue with straight party ticket voting. I know um, I've, I've been voting since I was 18. Um, me and my family are very um, active in exercising our right to vote. I am one of the people who likes to fill in the candidates individually. My mother is one of the people who likes to vote straight party ticket, and I like that I live in a state that gives us that freedom and that choice. Mm -hmm. I want to understand why my government is trying to limit the participation of the citizens in the civic process. I want to understand why the government wants to pass a law that makes it more difficult for people to vote instead of making it easier for people to vote. I want to understand why the government wants to pass a law that basically cuts young people out of the system instead of encouraging high schoolers to, to do their civic duty, to participate in democracy. They, we watched in there as they introduced their pages today, and yet what I witnessed, that what they were demonstrating to the pages was what it is to operate an oppressive government. I heard, um, I can't remember who the senator was, he, he asked uh, Senator Ruccio, uh, does the bill say that minorities can't vote? As if that's supposed to be some kind of point to me. Excuse me, I'm familiar with Plessy versus Ferguson. I know that Plessy versus, versus Ferguson said separate but equal. And I think we are all in the South familiar with how Plessy versus Ferguson was actually enacted in the South. And House Bill 589 is coming, is, is, is created in the same spirit that Plessy versus Ferguson is. It's a law that, that may not explicitly state that it is to keep certain people from voting, but that is the function. Do not be deceived. And if that's not the function, then Representative Tillis should have no problem coming here and explaining to us why it makes sense to limit voting in North Carolina. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. B-R-E-N-E-W-S-O-M-E. -E. Guys, listen up. I'm the lieutenant of the General Assembly Police Department. You have been asked, okay, to leave this room. If you do not leave this room, you are subject to be arrested. All right, media, I need you to step outside and give us room to operate. Forward together. Not, not one, one step, step back. back. Forward together. Not one step 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 back. I. I. I believe. I believe. I believe that we. I believe that we. I believe that we will win. 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 I believe it's in your best intention. I believe that we will win.